out to the Lord all the land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with sin. Knowing that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Let us pray. For heaven, Father, we come thanking you right now. Lord, just for being so good to us. Lord, you have been so kind to us. Lord, you have shown us mercy. Lord, you have shown us great love. We thank you this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for how you watched over us all last night. Lord, you gave us the mind to come out to your house and pray just one more time. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, some of us won't go with headaches and heartaches and all kinds of aches for one. We know that you want to heal over Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Lord, for healing right now. Lord, we thank you for your word that we're working on today. We ask for Lord that you would touch our past and past days as you pray your word. Lord, help you to increase while your Holy Spirit increases in our life. Lord, Lord, that we can hear a word from you. Lord, help us to be servants and good servants. Lord, help us, Lord, to be part of you. Even as we leave this place, Lord, that you would help us to go out and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you have done for us. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives right now, Heavenly Father. Oh, we thank you and we pray for all the name of what you will do for us, oh Lord. We just give you all the glory, all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
my boot. This is our Christmas play, Dinner with Jesus. I'm going to take you to the life of Joshua, a very simple, hard-working man. Joshua lived nearby in the town of Sugarland. Now let's get a sneak peek of Joshua's life. Joshua starts his day with a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day and everything you have done for my family, Lord. But God, there's still one thing I'm going to ask you, and you already know what it is. I would like for you to come to my house for Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Joshua is now busy reading his newspapers. Ava, where's my coffee? I'm still waiting. Meet Joshua's wife, Ava. She's always concerned about Joshua and the two of their kids. Here's your coffee, Joshua. Thank you, Ava. Jackie, Emerson, wake up, get ready for school. Good morning, Mom. Good morning. We're in for school now. Bye. <laughs> Here's your lunchbox, Joshua. Thank you, Ava. I'll see you in the evening. Goodbye. As evening came, after a long day, everyone gathered around the table. As usual, during this time of prayer, Joshua says, Jesus, please come to my house. I want to see you. Immediately, he heard the voice calling. Joshua, do you hear me? Joshua, I'm coming to your house on Christmas. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Joshua was very happy. Ava, Emerson, Jackie, come here. My wish is finally going to come true. Jesus is coming to our house for Christmas. <laughs> we need to start decorating the house. And Ava, you should start cooking some food. Daddy, Daddy, we, can, we got like a big sign for Jesus. Let's decorate the house with toys and lights. Oh, and I want to clean my room for Jesus. I want to see how I want him to see how clean my room is. Those are excellent ideas, Jackie and Emerson. Ava, you should start cooking some food. Yes, Joshua. I can make some turkey dressing, mashed potatoes, and potato pie. I can make fruit salad and soup and chocolate. Daddy, pie. Daddy, we have to wear some really nice clothing. I want to shop for all of us, and I need your credit card. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, Joshua, let's invite your brother James to celebrate Jesus' birthday with us. I'm sure we'll be thrilled to see him in person, too. That's a good idea, Ava. Call him. Hello? James, would you like to come to dinner with us tonight? Jesus is going to be there. Okay, great. See you in the evening. Everyone gets busy decorating and fixing the house. Thank you for spending Christmas with us. 
Waiting and waiting, it was evening. Joshua and his family were waiting, and suddenly the doorbell rang. That's Jesus at the door. Open it. Jackson opens the door and sees a poor man standing at the door, all shivering and cold. Sir, can I please come in? Can I please come in and warm up in your house for a little bit? I'm so cold and hungry, please. Poor man, go away. We're, we're, we're waiting for a very important guest to celebrate with. Now leave us alone. Joshua shuts the door, and the poor man walked back into the cold night. Jesus, when are you going to come? And for the second time, the doorbell rings. That's Jesus at the door. I deserve to see him first. Then Joshua opens the door and sees a poor lady standing with a little baby, and the baby is crying. Again, this disappointment. What do you want, lady? I am homeless. My baby's very cold and hungry. Do you have any milk? Lady, I don't have no half and half milk, but I don't have no chocolate milk. Now leave us alone and quiet that baby down. The poor lady walks away crying, and Joshua goes inside. Joshua, when is Jesus coming? I guess he's running late, but the food is getting cold and the kids are tired. I guess he's not coming. Ava, don't be so negative. Jesus always keeps his promises. And for the third time, the bell rings. Joshua jumps out of his chair and runs to the door. Who are you? I'm traveling to Dallas and it's getting dark and I can't find a place to stay for me right now. Could you please let me stay at your house right now? I'm begging you. Listen up, stranger. Leave us alone. Joshua shuts the door and walks back sad. Jesus, why won't you come? Dad, what is Jesus coming? Wait, I want to go to the office. My big sad. I'm retired or sleepy. I'm hungry. I'm in the bed. Suddenly, Jesus called. Joshua. Who's there? Joshua. Who's there? Jesus, where have you been? We've been home waiting all day for you. Joshua, I came to meet you. Lord, when did you come? We've been home cooking and cleaning all day for you. Joshua, I came to your house three times and you did not help me. What? Lord, when did you come? I came like a beggar, asking for clothes to wear, and you did not clothe me. I came like a woman with a baby, asking for milk, and you did not feed me. I came like a stranger, asking for a place to stay for a night, and you did not provide shelter. Lord, please forgive me, only if I had known. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of them, the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. The spirit of Christmas is not about bright lights, fanfare, shopping for gifts, or cooking your favorite foods and eating all you can. Christmas is about loving and sharing what you have with others in need. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus and how he came to give his life for us. When we needed a savior, God loved us so much that he sent his son to be born in a stable in Bethlehem. Yeah. Jesus was born. Jesus died. And Jesus rose from the dead so we might live with him forever in heaven. Jesus is the reason for the Christmas season.
The Stranger, Gilbert. James, the brother, Ashley. Jesus, Braylon. Narrator, Hazelden. Announcer and doorbell ringer, Loretta.
Chapters 28, verses are 18 through 20. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. You found it, you will discover these words. Reading from the New King James Version, it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. I want to talk about the message is urgent. The message is urgent. I say the message is urgent. Dr. Dinah Cole of the Holy Street Baptist Church in Third Ward, Houston, Texas. During a mission meeting, painted a picture before us of how urgent the message was and how urgent the message is. Dr. Cobra tells the story of a dream that she had. And she gave me permission to share it with you. She tells the story at a mission meeting when she was instructing us to get excited about winning souls for Jesus. Dr. Colbert said to us, she said she had this dream, and in her dream, it was hot outside. I mean, Texas hot. Real hot. 105 degrees hot outside. And in the middle of the heat of the day, snow starts falling. Snow fell so swiftly and so hard until the news reporters were even baffled. They were amazed how snow came upon this great state of Texas all of a sudden. In the middle of the summer, while it was hot outside, Texas hot, real hot, snow began to fall. In the midst of the summer. She said in her dream, she began to, to go and grab people and pull them inside. And said, come on in the house. This is not just snow. It is dangerous snow. 
She said as she was running from one to the other and telling them, you need to come on in. Don't enjoy the snow. Children, don't play in the snow. It is hot outside and it's snowing outside. This is a dangerous situation. She was saying over and over again, come on in this house. Come on in this house. She said she moved with great swiftness. She moved with great urgency because it wasn't just snow you played in. It was dangerous because it was hot and it was snowing. She said that God spoke to her in that dream and said to her very clearly, this is how I'm coming. I'm coming unannounced. I'm coming like a thief in the night. I am coming when I come. It's not going to be the right time for most people. All right. She said to us in that room that what we preach and what we teach and, and what we deliver unto people who are unsaved, unchurched, is urgent. She says that we can't sleep on this. We, we cannot lay down on this. We cannot walk is walk on this and act like life is just going on anyhow. We must be changed. She says our attitude towards saving souls must be different. She said we must get in a hurry just to deliver the message of Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Yes, yes, yes. And then we can sing the song. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And amen. Our children have painted a beautiful picture of the beauty of a little baby laying in a manger. Our children have, have painted a beautiful picture of how they walked Jesus before us from the birth to the grave and to the resurrection. I want to stop by to tell you this morning, the message is urgent. Let me tell you why the message is urgent. The message is urgent because the situation is critical. Yes. We have before us critical situations. How you know it's critical, preacher? Because children are no longer respecting parents. That's right. The situation is critical. When men will jump out of a car and shoot you at point blank range, range just because you move from one lane to the other, I'm telling you the situation is critical. Yes, yes. When mamas will walk off and leave their own children on the street and don't look to come back and pick them up again, let me tell you the situation is critical. Yes, yes, yes. When the divorce rate in the church is just as high as the divorce rate out of the church, I want to tell you the situation is critical. All right. When people would rather go other places than to go to church as if we're manufacturing COVID-19 at the church, you know, it never occurs to people that we may catch something until we talk about Sunday morning. All right. All right. All right. Come on, pal. Family reunions are packed. Sporting events are jam-packed. Right. Airports and airplanes are jam-packed. Yeah. Right. But when it comes to the house of the Lord, right. we can't go there because we don't want to expose ourselves right. to COVID-19. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The job market it is packed. Yeah. Right. We can go to work, but we can't go to church. Yeah. The situation is critical. Yeah. And the message must be urgent. Whenever, whenever you find people who say they got a mixed up uh, a responsibility, they got mixed up feelings, and they that so I'm a woman locked up inside a man. Let me tell you, the situation is critical. All right. yeah. Whenever, whenever we fall into Romans chapter one, where it says that men will be given to unnatural affection and women will do the same, I want to tell you the situation is critical. Whenever we find, whenever we find people having to change their phone numbers, <laughs> mama, mama still has the same phone number from, right. from 1975. Yes. <laughs> You're right. But you know, when we look at the church roll and, and, and we mail something out or we call somebody and we realize that they changed that number last six months and now it's changed again in the last three months and now it's changed again in the last two months. Let me tell you, the situation is critical. All right. yes, and the message is urgent. Mm -hmm. And when I say urgent, I mean we got to get in a hurry. Yes. 
We must tell the story like the children have told the story today. We must tell the story of Jesus. Let me tell you, it's all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's not about our thing. It's not about what we do. It's not about how we are, we are accomplished in our lives. And it's not about our degrees. It's not about who we hang out with, who we spend time with, who we love or what we love. It's all about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And if men, women, boys, and girls are going to change their lives from burglarizing to mission, mission work, then it needs to be about Jesus. When, when, when women stop selling, if, if women are going to stop selling their body for a few dollars, if we're going to stop people from slaughtering and dying, if we're going to stop people from dying for foolish reasons, we got to get in a hurry yeah. to, to give yeah. them this one message about yeah. Jesus. Right. Right. In, the text, in the text, Jesus meets with his disciples. And when he meets with his disciples, he, he tells them that the message is urgent. He says to them, in verse 18, he says, Jesus says, and he comes and speaks to them, and he says, all power, this word in the King James Version is power, this word in the Greek is exousia, all power, all authority is given unto me on earth and in heaven. Jesus says to them that this is power, this exousia power, this authority, this ability, this power, this strip is permissionary power. Yeah. It is power that I have permission to use. Mm -hmm. He says, this power has been given to me from God himself. Mm -hmm. He says, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. All the power, every bit of the power. It's not some of the power, but all the power. All the power. You see, the devil wants you to think that he is powerful. The devil wants you to think that he has you under control. The devil wants you to think that he's the one who keeps right on blessing you. But let me tell you, the devil may be powerful, but he doesn't have all power. All right, all right, all right. This, word, this, this word power, this word power, exclusive our power, this word power, the ability to perform, this word power, all power, the phrase all power means that God is omnipotent. It means that God has all power. It means that God is able to do what he wants to do. He has all power. Yes, yes. So if you're going to trust him for your health, you better trust him because he has all power. Yes, if you're going to trust him for your relationship, you better trust him because he has all power. If you're going to trust him for your lifestyle, you better trust him because he has all power. There is no one like him. Our God has all power. Jesus says all power. all power. Every bit of the power. Young people, I, I know principals don't do the right thing. Young people, I know teachers don't, don't act the right way. I know they're just picking on you. But remember this, God has all power. That's right. And you need to call on him when you get in a bind. You need to call on him. Jesus says that all power has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Yes, yes. And let me certainly notice, just because Jesus said the power has been given to him, doesn't mean that the power of God no longer exists. All right. All right. Because the God we serve is all power, he is all powerful, and Jesus is all powerful, and let me tell you, they both can be powerful at the same time. All right. You see, if we give away our strength, then we no longer have power. But when, when God gives strength to Jesus, he still has power because he is all power. He is all power. He is omnipotent. He is powerful. He says, he says to us this morning, all power has been given to us, given to him, brother, in heaven and in earth. And then he gives this command. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. He says make disciples. Make disciples of all nations. And when he says make disciples, he said, make sure you create an atmosphere where people can follow Jesus. Yes. Right. When you make disciples, you become the one that models out who Jesus is. Yes. And you can't model out who Jesus is unless you are born again. All right. He says, whatever you do, make sure you present yourself in a way where you can be the teacher. 
And then those who are unsaved, unchurched, and unreached can follow you simply because you are leading them and they are the disciple of you and then they become the disciple of Jesus. Mm -hmm. when, you see, when you see all over this room, young musicians, mm -hmm. they go. bring great things to the table. Yes, yes. And when the disciple is mature, he or she will be better mm -hmm. than their teachers. Right. Yeah. I said when the, when the disciple matures, yeah. he or she will be better than his or her teacher. Mm -hmm. What that says to us, Sister Davis, and, and I, I think you're all right with it, but let me just serve you notice, Sister Davis, that when all these musicians mm -hmm. are mature musicians, they ought to be better than Sister Davis. Right, right. Mm -hmm. they, they, ought to be, they ought to be at the point where they understand really well, all I got to do is bring my smarts to the table. Yeah, yeah. All I have to do is practice on a regular basis. Yeah. All I have to do is trust God. And because Sister Davis is following the God we serve, then all the musicians ought to be better than she is. All right, all right. And she ought to be proud about it. Yes, she ought to be glad about it. She ought to say, oh, that's my student. Yeah, right there. Right. I, I didn't do very much, but they just have it going on. All right. All right on. She ought to be able to say, they were smart in class. And they were smart in school. They were smart in music. And now look at them. They're able to take things beyond yeah, what right. I showed them. And the way you can do it is you bring what you have gone through to the table. Mm -hmm. Then you bring what you have been taught to the table. And you take that and God put it together and you are better than your teacher. All right, all right. So today we look forward to the day where she can retire from teaching. I'm looking forward to the day too. I think I said that another way. <laughs> Sister Davis is looking forward to a day, Gilbert, where, where she can retire from teaching. And Pastor Davis is looking forward to that day also. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Simply because, because we as seniors, we have to do all we can while we can. Yeah. And we have to put 100% into what we do while we can. Amen. And we ought to do everything, everything we can possibly do now. Don't shut down on God. You ought to live for God now. Demonstrate for God now. Because one of these days you have to get your old self out of the way. A few days from 60. My afro won't grow anymore. <laughs> Only thing I can do on a baseball field now is show shortstop and I feel what to do. <laughs> Brother Irvin, I can't show them what to do. I can't demonstrate to them how I used to do. The only thing I can do now is tell them how it ought to be done. And after I tell them, after I tell them, I tell, once I tell them, all I can do is get out of the way and watch them perform. Mm -hmm. Because it becomes a day mm -hmm. when you are washed up. Mm -hmm. I can't even say 4 5 40 anymore <laughs> without laughing. I can't see myself running down a ball in the outfield anymore. But I can tell somebody else what position to put your body in and where your state of mind ought to be. And then they can accomplish more than I can accomplish. All right. That's what we ought to be doing now. Every adult in the room ought to be mentoring ought to be showing somebody the way. You ought to have somebody that's following you. We ought not be looking out for ourselves. We ought to be looking out for the generations that are yet to come. We ought to get to a point in our life where we can show somebody something, but you can't show somebody something if you don't ever do anything. That's right. That's right. We ought to work hard now. You know what? I'm not working hard anymore. I'm planning for the day when I can say amen. 
Amen. And amen. amen. I'm looking forward to the day where God sends a young man to the New England church who can take it and run with it further than I can ever go. I'm looking forward to the day where I can sit on the sideline and cheer him on. All right, all right. Because, you know, I'm not crazy. I don't think that I can't be <laughs> disposed of. <laughs> I mean, here I am today. I mean, I got out of bed this morning, Morgan, and I, I had to think about it. <laughs> I couldn't jump up like I used to jump up. I had to roll over, put the left hand down push myself up with the left hand. And as I push myself up, my inside of me start talking to the outside of me. Right. Saying stuff like... <laughs> <laughs> we have to make disciples. And as we make disciples, we teach people, the text says, whatever you do, go therefore and make disciples. Hmm. You want to duplicate yourself. You ought to tell somebody about Jesus. You ought to tell them the story of Jesus Christ as these young people have taught us today. All right. mm -hmm. Christmas is not about presents. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Mm -hmm. Christmas is not about money. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. Christmas is not about where you can shop. All right. Because if it was about money, it would be called Monmus. All right, all right. Yes. <laughs> but it's not called Monmus. If, if it was about present, it would be called Presmus. But it's called Christmas. It's all about Christ, and we have to teach our young people that it's about Jesus Christ and not about anything else. Now, I give gifts, and I receive gifts. So I'm not hating on your gifts. I told you last week, every woman already had made the statement, whether she said it to you or not. She said, brother, love is action. She said, brother, and she said it with a tune, the attitude. I mean, they, I mean, the sisters know how to roll their neck, blink their eyes, and even know how to point their finger. And they will tell you that love is an action word. I mean that you ought to, you not, don't wait till Christmas to give me something. Right. Don't wait till Christmas to treat me right. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till Christmas show up in order to have the right attitude toward me. What he's saying is we ought to be Christ-like all year long. Yes, right. He says go, go, he says go. And when he says go, he means in the process of your moving around. In your daily activity. You don't have to get together, although we should. We should get together in corporate prayer. We should get together in corporate evangelism. And we're going to hit the street as soon as possible. And we ought to get together and share Christ Jesus. But in the process of your going, as you're going to work, you ought to make disciples. As you're riding down the road, you ought to make disciples. Yesterday I was at the gas station. I heard a commotion behind me. And I, I, I heard this commotion. And I had just seen these ladies come out of the store. And I heard this big commotion behind me. And here I am in 2022 in Houston, Texas. And I get out of my car to see what the commotion is. Now, that's a problem right there. Yeah, it is. Thank God for Jesus. I hear this commotion. I hear this commotion behind me. And these two big, huge women had gotten out of their car to jump on this little bitty lady and her three children. So I came from one angle, another guy came from another angle, and he was just saying, ladies, ladies, ladies. And all of a sudden, the big, huge lady takes her whole drink that she just paid for. You know it wasn't me. Because if I pay for it, Brother Miles, I'm going to keep it. She took a whole big gulp of drink and threw it on the lady with her children present. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, the situation is, is critical. And I thank God, I thank God that they were able to drive off and calling her all kinds of names rather than it got more physical. But in our going, we ought to be living examples of what Jesus is and who Jesus is. We ought to be Jesus in the flesh. He says, go therefore, in other words, in your process of going. 
In your process of living, you need to make disciples. In your process of doing, you need to represent Jesus Christ well. Yeah. Right. And let me just serve notice on if you go way out somewhere in the country and do your dirt, mm. somebody sees you. Yes, you right about that. Cameras are everywhere. I mean, people walk around with cameras every day. Yeah. And all they have to do on the Android, you push the button two times and it's ready. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the ISO, but, but everybody, everybody is at the ready to videotape everything. And even if they think they know who you are, or they think something's going to pop off, guess what? They got their cameras ready. That's right. That's right. Karen, it's a bad time to be called Karen and Karen, I know, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Karen and cabins are everywhere. Yeah. They're all over the place. They they have come to the point where they are so self righteous. They can say anything, do anything. And the moment Karen opens her mouth, the phone starts popping. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Karen is that she and I, I you know, please forgive me. It's just the name that they give her. It's not me, okay? Yeah. The thing about Karen, she doesn't care, or he doesn't care what the situation is and they don't care who's recording they just keep acting out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we have to understand that we have to be the light mm. we have to be the salt mm. says go therefore and make disciples mentor somebody mm -hmm. tell somebody the right way to go stop somebody from going mm. the wrong way stop mm -hmm. someone from climbing up fool's hill yeah. Stop them. Tell the young people, baby, don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not God-like. But I know we're in the 21st century now. In the 21st century, parents will jump on you by their children. That's right. Don't say it. Now, they will send you to send their children with you for eight hours for you to speak into their lives, but they don't want you to speak into their lives. <laughs> but we ought to be people who will tell young people, don't do it. Baby, come here. Mm -hmm. Baby, let's do it this way. Mm -hmm. Let's try it this way. It's because we are to make disciples. Then it says all nations. All nations means all people. All nations mean all races. Mm -hmm. As you can see in this church, we got all nations. <laughs> all right, all right. You can, you can see it. You, you may want to ignore it. You may want to, but you can't ignore it. Mm -hmm. We have all nations. And if we're going to look like heaven, yeah. we got to include all nations. Right. It says to us, we got to stop being overly concerned about our race. All right. All right. About our people. Right, about us stuff. Yeah. we got to be concerned about everybody. We got to have the attitude of God and make sure we look forward to everybody getting to know Jesus Christ because the situation is critical. Yeah. And just as the situation is critical, the message must become urgent. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This baptism, the Greek word is baptizo, and it comes from a time when people would dye their clothes. What they would do, they would take a white garment and they would push it in a bath full of colors. And they would bathe that garment under the water, baptizo would bathe that garment under the water, and when it comes back out of the water, when they bring it back out of the water, then that garment has changed colors. He says to us today, we need to go and tell people about Jesus Christ, so much so until we bring them to be baptized. All right, right. Now this word baptizo, this word baptize, means to go all the way under the water. It doesn't mean sprinkle. It means to take that person all the way under the water and bring them back up. And the idea is because you recognize that Jesus is the Son of God, that He died for your sins and rose from the dead, when you come back under the water from under the water, it says, I believe the story. Uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. Now I, I, I tell you what Big Mama used to say. She said, He went in 
as a dry devil and came back as a wet devil. In other words, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, if you have not been converted, baptism, water baptism does not save you. You come back out the same way you went under. So you must be saved. You must be born again. He says, whatever you do, disciple them. Get them to recognize who Jesus is, what Jesus has done on Calvary. Make sure you promote this thing. Teach them, teach them, and teach them, and then baptize them. Now, having said that, 98% of the folk in church were baptized before they were saved. And one is talking to. I was baptized at age 10. I met Jesus at age 18. And guess where I was? I was in Ms. Bonner's sixth period class. Yeah, across. Yeah, across. Her geometry class. Across the hall. Across the hall. From the cafeteria. From the cafeteria. Room number two. Dorothy Steele said to me, you don't have to keep living the way you're living. You can be changed right now, right here in this room. Dorothy Steele said to me, she said, birds don't have to sing. She said, birds don't have to fly around the room. She said, the earth doesn't have to quake. She says, you don't have to get up and run around the room. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and rose from the dead. I met Jesus that day. Yes, Lord. And guess what? I didn't go back and get baptized again. Mm -mm. Because it's the, it's the story. Mm -hmm. It's the acceptance of the story that saves me. So the text the class that once they're saved, you ought to get them baptized. Right. And the reason why you're getting them baptized is because when they go down in the water, baptizo. Mm -hmm. When they go down in the water, they say that I believe that Jesus died and he was buried. When the preacher brings them back up or the deacon brings them back up out of the water, that says, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. All right. And he says that in front of people, I'm saying to you, I've been saved because I believe the story and I trust this story to get me to heaven. Yeah. No other story can get you there. No other story can get you before God. No other story can set you right with God. See, we were born in a mess. I mean, we were messed up when we were born. We didn't even have a chance. Isaiah says we were born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. We were just messed up. And we were born messed up. Sin was all around us. Uh, Paul says in Romans 3 and 23, he says that all have sin. He didn't say y'all have sin. He said all have sin. All have fallen short of God's glory. So because we sin, we need a Savior. Yes, Lord. And because we are, we are separated from God, God is here and man is here. We can't get to God and God can't get to us because a great gulf of sin separates us. Sin separates us. But oh Jesus, oh Jesus, yes, yes. died on Calvary, yes, yes. buried in a bar of tomb. Rose early in that third day morning. Right and because we believe the story, yeah. we are now saved. He bridged the gap mm -hmm. between God and man. Right. He says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The author Matthew says to us that God is one God in three persons. He exemplifies the Trinity. He's God all by himself. There is no God like our God. He is God all by himself. He wasn't selected God. He wasn't elected God. He was not promoted to be God. He just is God, and he always will be God, and he's God in three persons. Yes, right. So he says when you baptize them, baptize them in the name of the Father. Hmm. Baptize them in the name of the Son. Hmm. And baptize them in the name of of the Holy Spirit. When he says, when he says to us that we need to make disciples, he says that we need to make sure our disciples develop to be baptized. In verse 20, he says, teaching them. He says, teaching them to observe all things. You see, first of all, we have to teach them so they can be delivered from bondage. Yes. You know all this mental stuff that people say they got going on? 
Much of it is bondage. Yes, yes. Jesus can change it. Right. Yes. We have to teach them that they can be delivered from bondage. Right. Right. Men are shackled. Women are shackled. Children are shackled. And they need deliverance from bondage. Yes, God. It says, teach them. This word teach means give them instructions by way of activity. We have to instruct them. We have to make sure we demonstrate to what they're saying and then give them on-the-job training. All right. All right. Teaching them to observe all things. This word observe means that it's an expression of the kingdom of God. And God, God wants us to be a living expression of who he is. God wants us to be able to point to somebody and say there's one that's walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's one, there's one, there's one that knows the Lord. There's one that will trust him. And you cannot identify people and who they are with the Lord just by them speaking in other tongues. Or by them shouting out loud or praying with great power. Or jumping high. Because the question becomes... When they finish jumping high, when they come back down, what do they do? Mm. Pastor Manson B. Johnson of the Holy Spirit Church used to say it like this. God is looking, is not, God is not looking for hallelujah as much as he's looking for doody doody. All right, all right, tell us that. God, I mean, hallelujah is good. We ought to praise him with great power and fervor. But we ought to, when we get through with hallelujah, we ought to have some action. Right, right. So God is looking for us to teach them to observe all things that God has commanded us. What we've done, we've, we've gotten a little stuff from here. A few things from there. A few things from here. And every time something new comes up, we follow that. The doctrine of the Bible by itself is good enough. The word of God by itself is just perfect. I used to wonder, how can one preacher preach 50 years with just 66 books of the Bible? Mm, he got to repeat himself every now and then, but the fact of the matter, God has put all we need in God's word. Mm -hmm. Everything, every problem, every situation, if you, want, if, if you want some drama, you don't have to watch TV. It's in the word. If you want a soap opera, you can turn Erica Cain off with all of her face lips. <laughs> if, if you want some drama, you don't have to go back and watch JR in Dallas to get you some drama. All you have to do is pick up God's word. Yes, yes. And when you pick up God's word, there's plenty mama drama, there's daddy drama, there's mistress drama. A woman told a woman, a woman, a woman mentioned to me the other day, she said to me, she said that, that that's the side. I thought she was talking about coleslaw, french fries. <laughs> I'm just so oblivious. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just out of touch, brother. She said, oh, oh, that's his side piece. Okay. <laughs> I should have called one of you and asked you, what does side piece really mean, Carl? When, I, when, when she said side piece, I started talking about fries, <laughs> greens, yeah. black eyed peas. Yeah. And y'all shaking y'all head like you knew already what a side piece was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking like, I need an education on this. I guess I am an old man. I, I guess I am out of touch. We have to understand that God is looking for us to do it right in the front of others so it will be right when others see it. Right, right. So they can live it right. Y'all yes, still laughing at me. That's all right. <laughs> but it says, whatever the word of God commands you, mm -hmm. do just that. Then he says, Lord. No, I told you before, Daddy didn't want to fly. Daddy, Daddy never wanted to fly. He didn't, Mama used to just fly all over the place. Mama was in a, a crop duster. Everybody know crop duster? Okay, yeah. okay. Everybody with me. Mama threw a crop duster. And then I ain't doing that. And if, if, if God wanted me to fly, he would have given me wings. And then he quotes the scripture. 
He said, God says, lo, I will be with you always. He didn't say, ha, I will be with you always. He said, look at the text. The text says, do whatever I commanded you, and lo, I will be with you always. Daddy said, I'm going to stay down here where God will be with me. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, this word lo means absolutely. This word lo means definitely. It says, Lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age, even until the end of the world. And then he says, Amen. Amen. So what he's saying to us today, I will definitely, definitely be with you. If you trust me. If you do what I've said for you to do. If you keep my commandments, I will be with you. He said to us, you know, and I've said to you several times, until God delivers you from gambling, just bring God 10%. That's all I ask. <laughs> until God delivers you, until, until the numbers stop flashing in your eyes, ooh, 320 million? <laughs> just make sure you give God 10%. Mm -hmm. But don't trust what you can make. Trust God. Yes, don't right. trust what you can gamble and get, trust God. Because folk got a lot of money, they got a lot of problems. Yes. Now let me tell you what I didn't say. I did not say you don't need a lot of money. Matter of fact, I need a lot of money. But the Bible says money answers all things. And if money answers all things, I want some. And so people ask, well, well preacher, you got to pray to win. I said, no, you go and win. And you share some of your money. Because when I did play, uh -huh. oh, I let it out. When I did play, uh -huh. it took my money and didn't give me anything in return. And let me tell you, brother God, I don't have much money to be losing. If God trusts me, if God gives me, if God allows me to have a couple million, I have a couple million plus some when Jesus gets back. I know that's right. Amen. We have to understand. That money can't fix our problems. Only Jesus can. You can have a cow king bed and don't get any sleep at night. You can have a mansion of a house and that house is not a home. But when you trust Jesus and what he's already done for you, he'll bless you real good a heap of plenty. That same Jesus that died over 2,000 years ago that same Jesus that gave his life as a ransom for you and me. That same Jesus they nailed to the cross. That same Jesus they raised up high. That same Jesus they dropped down low. That same Jesus that died on Calvary. Trust him. Yes, Lord. The same Jesus that got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. Trust him. He's here today. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. We ought to try Jesus. He is the only one who can bless you. Try Jesus because the message is urgent. And the message is urgent because the situation is critical. We need Jesus. The door is open. If you've never tried Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is your moment. If you never walked with him, you've never trusted him, this is your opportunity. Would you bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life? I hear you. You say, but preacher, my life ain't right. I just want to tell you, you'll never get your life right. You need to trust Jesus to get your life right. Just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
We believe that you praise this prayer honestly, believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died for your sin. You're now on your way to heaven. And when you die, when you leave here, the same Jesus will welcome you from here to the other plane. If you're here today, you know, you're listening today, and you don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church. But Jesus is the captain of the ship. But Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. If you're listening by way of internet, let us know, inbox us and let us know, number one, that you receive Jesus as your personal Savior. Number two, you want to be water baptized all the way up the water. And number three, that you want to join the New Beginning Church and be a full-fledged member of this great family of faith. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for, for blessing us. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. It is now offering time. It is now time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. We have white and blue envelopes for tithes offering, sacrificial gifts, and a white and red envelope for a pastor's love offering. Please ask for whichever one you want or both, and, and pray that the Lord will continue to bless us in the name of Jesus. For those of you who want to give by way of veil, you can give by way of veil at lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That's lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. For those of you who want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Let's read this scripture together, Luke 6, 38. This is the New Living Translation. Let's read together. Give, and you will receive. Let's start over. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shake it together to make room for more. Running over and pour it into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get. Back, Luke 6 and 38. Father God, we thank you now for this privilege of giving. We thank you, Father, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for those who will give. And we pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We're we'll going to ask this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering sacrifice and
Amen. Um, I'm Rachel. I'm also here to see you. Amen. Amen. Look at my brother pulling them in. Oh, yes, ma'am. Rich Johnson. I'm here to see my niece and my family. Who is your niece? Uh, Loretta. Oh, Loretta, I'm going to give you a dollar, girl. You, 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 you deserve it. Loretta, I'm going to give you a dollar. <laughs> you pulling them in. Yes, ma'am. I'm visiting before I'm visiting. Amen. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Miss Daisy from Field Elementary. She was the teacher of my kids. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Guess what? Sister Daisy's not going to see the dollar though. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service on today. Thank you for, for blessing us. Uh, Hazelin is coming. Hazelin is coming. Christmas program and birthday party for Jesus a success. Amen. NBC group photo for 2023 calendar. We will take a group photo after service today for our 2023 calendar. Everyone is invited to participate in the photo. Christmas service. We will have a Sunday school and, Chris and worship service next Sunday on Christmas Day on December 25th. It's going to be hosted at our regular time. And the virtual New Year's Eve service is going to be hosted on Zoom, Saturday, December 31st at 8 o'clock p.m. Please remember those on our prayer list. Malvin White, Cody Guzman, Sammy Sivaran, Vivian Aslaha, Doris Bridgeford, Taurus Hemingway, Jesse Jenkins, Audrey Brownlee, Safety in Schools, Kimberly Sanders, Minnie Howard and Family, Pastor James C. Hicks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, and Marie Brooks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Please, ma'am, please, sir, hang around today. All our visitors, please hang around. Please hang around today for our photo. We want you to be in our photo. Uh, if you're not running from the law, It'll be a good thing for you to be in the photo, amen. If you don't take a photo, I know, know you weren't coming out, amen. So please hang around with us to, to, to take photos here today. Thank you so much for visiting with us. Thank you for being a part. Uh, will you stand in the back for us and say hello to us? Will you stand? The people usually that stare at me and look at me, that's usually who I'm, who I'm talking to, that look around. Will you stand and say hello to us? Tell us who you are. Amen. Tell us who you are, where you're from, who invites you. Okay, thank you. You get 50 cents, so you'll get 50 cents for inviting our guests today. The adults get 50 cents, children get dollars. Amen. Thank you for being a part of our service. If you would, please fill out the business card. If you're visiting with us for the first time, please fill out a business card. I want to give you a call to see how things went with you when you visit our church. I think we have food, right? We have food. We have food today. This will be our first time getting back together since COVID-19 to have, have food. Hang around. Let's eat together. Let's praise the Lord together. Those who are watching online, God bless you so much. We're eating up for you. Thank you so much for, for being a part of our service. Um, who, who did not receive a journal this morning? Please stand. If you did not receive a book from me this morning, please stand. If you did not receive a book, stand if you did not, please. So, Spar, you didn't get a book? Your mind is, is on the other side of the town? I, I got it. Okay, one, two. If you did not, whether you're visiting or not, uh, if, if you didn't get a book, please stand. If you did not. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Those two will receive a book. And uh, to our guests, what we're doing is we have. 
we are we are listening to the Bible on for the year 2023. We're listening to the Bible, and we want you to be a part of that. And so we want to give you one per household. If you live in the same house, we want to give you a book. And uh, please accept this must. We are listening to the Bible five days a week. And so you get a chance to listen along with us. And we want, we want to give you a book. Amen. Why don't we stand to be dismissed? Did I forget anything? Again, thank God for our youth and our young people. Thank God for our young people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for our youth and our young people. Father God, for who you are, for what you do. Lord, we thank you for the command to go. This great command to make disciples. This great command to baptize all nations. Teaching them to observe all things. And whatever is right, we know you will be with us even until the end of age. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join in by saying, Amen. Our mission and vision statement, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you. God keep you. Let me pray over the food. But before we go eat, we want to uh, take pictures, okay? Uh, Father God, we thank you for this food and this drink. We ask you a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody's coming this way. Me and one.